Hello and welcome to the fourth video in this series for beginners programming a tile puzzle game on the iPad using Cocos 2D and iOS. So we are going to take in this video a little bit of a look at the code that Cocos 2D has generated by default for us and we'll just take a, a very quick skim over the application. So you remember the last video hopefully how director scenes and layers work. Well in this application we've got two layers so the introduction layer, which was the splash screen, where the image appeared. And then we have what's called the hello world layer, where the splash screen then turned into the black screen with the hello world written on it. And we don't actually have a file that is directly a CC scene, so a scene class file. We have the intro layer here, which is a CC layer. And we have the hello world layer here, which also is a subclass of CC layer. And you'll see that both of these layers have a static method that returns a scene object. Also intro layer has one. And the reason for this is, is in this application they're only adding one layer to a scene. So rather than create a separate layer and scene files, so that would be four files, it's simpler to create just two files in a layer and make a static method to return a scene. So let's go to the intro layer and have a look at this method. So here we have the static method. So as soon as the intro layer class is instantiated, we this static method of course will exist and the following will happen. First the scene object is created, a node is basically shortcut for allocation and then initialization. So it calls something called the init, the init function on the object. And then once that's been done, the, an intro layer itself here is created and also allocated and initialized. Then the scene has an add child method, and as a child it adds the layers, a bit like I explained in the last video, and the scene itself is then returned. Now normally initialization for all of the things you want on your layer is done inside the init function, which is part of the call to node. And if we go to hello world layer, you'll see that indeed this does have an init function. But intro layer does all of its initialization inside on enter. And there's a subtle reason for this, which I'll talk about in later videos. But it still basically com contains initialization code. So the first thing it's doing is asking for the size of the window from the shared director. It's then creating a sprite called background and sets the image for this sprite, depending on whether we're using an iPhone or an iPad. And interestingly is the line here. It sets the position of this sprite at CCP, which is basically it's it's a macro that Cocos have supplied, which makes is a shortcut to creating a CG point object, so simply an X by Y, and it's saying to place this at width divided by two and height divided by two, so in the middle of the screen. Now, if I go to Inkscape because I've prepared something very quickly, here I've got an image. And here I've got the iPad screen. And in Cocos 2D, the bottom left is 0, 0. So we've got 0, 7, 6, 8, 1024, 7, 6, 8, and 1024, 0 on the bottom right here. If I place this image at height divided by 2 and width divided by 2, it's exactly, cent exactly centered. Because when you place an image, the point that goes over the point you specify is what's called the anchor point on the image or sprite or whatever. And by default, the anchor point is exactly in the middle. So the middle of the image is placed at the point we specify. If, for example, we specify the point 0, 0, so the bottom left corner of this image, it would then have been positioned like so. So by default, it's in the center. And in the tile game, we're actually positioning all of our tiles by specifying the anchor point at 0 by 0. So you'll see a different method used when we start making the tile game. So that was just a quick little overview of how the coordinates work, just so you understand why the position's being set at width divided by 2 and height divided by 2, because often the question comes into mind, well, hang on, the image isn't just one point, it's many points. Which point is used for positioning? Well, that's the answer. The default is to use the middle of the image. Then here, like with the scene function above, we add this background sprite as a child onto the layer. And then here is some a schedule once selector which is simply says after one second call this transition function and then if we go down to the transition function you can see that the director is told to replace its current scene using a transition fade 
taking one second, and replace with the Hello World layer scene. And also given a colour for the, the uh, transition. So if you then go into the Hello World layer scene function, which is called, a scene is instantiated and allocated and in it is called, and then here is the Hello World, just as in the intro layer, it's added to the scene and the scene is returned, which the director then runs. And here in node, the init function is called, and all this initialization here then takes place. So it makes the Hello World label, which was the text you saw, again positions this label in the center of the screen, adds it as a child, and some other things that aren't important now carry on in the rest of the function. But that's just a basic overview of how that works. If you're wondering how the initialization here ever takes place, because it's never called, init is never called by node, well, when on enter is called just as the layer is actually displayed. So init is always called here with node when it's first allocated, and on enter is called when the layer is displayed. And it's good practice usually to do all of your initialization in init because that will only be called once on object initialization. On enter can be called more than once, and it can be dangerous to have your initialization running or rerunning when you're in the middle of something. But I'll explain, as I said in a later video, why on enter is being used in this case. So now let's take one quick look into the app delegate before we finish this video. The app delegate has an important function called did finish launching with options, which runs at exactly this time when it's finished launching with its options. And important lines to look at in here are, here's where we say display the stats yes or no for the frame rate. Here we can set the target frame rate of the application, which is set to 60 frames a second. Here is important to set the suffixes of your high definition graphics files. And here's the most important line where actually at the, for the application start we tell the director which scene to run. And we're going to run the scene that's created by calling the static scene method in the intro layer, which then runs through the code that we've just looked at. OK, so that's a pretty brief and quick overview of the template provided by Cocos 2D. From the next video onwards, we'll start working on the tile game program rather than working with the Cocos template. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.